Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly bleed the stubborn 3.5 liter 2GRFE Toyota Lexus V6. These engines seem to be a little bit difficult to bleed and the procedure in the book doesn't exactly work very well. So I'm going to share with you a little trick that we discovered working with these engines every single day at a Toyota dealership that really works and works quick and works good. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, Welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other Toyota and Lexus videos. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and without further ado, let's get to work. So on the 2008 Highlander that I'm working on today, we're just replacing the coolant. Most of these V6 models Camry, Avalon, Sienna, Venza, etc. You'll have a drain plug at the bottom of the radiator, usually on the driver's side, some of them on the passenger side. You're just going to drain the coolant, open the radiator cap, let the coolant drain until it stops. One thing I will note, guys, this procedure only applies to 2GR FE and 2GR FXE. So that's going to be your 3.5 liter without direct injection and your hybrid models. On the hybrid models, you're gonna wanna put the engine in maintenance mode. There's a video I made on coolant, on engine coolant for the four cylinder, which I explained maintenance mode in. I will leave the link for it right here on top of the screen. This does not apply to the 2GR FKS, which is the engine that is updated, that has the plastic valve covers, that came out around 2017. Unfortunately, Toyota decided to get rid of the bleeder that we use for this procedure, so this procedure doesn't apply. In the future, I will make a video on the 2GR of KS, how to bleed the coolant, which is actually much more difficult than this one. And folks, one more thing, all these engines, all the 2GR FEs, they take pink, super long life Toyota coolant, I always recommend you use the original coolant. It's not really that more expensive than any aftermarket coolant and you know it's compatible and good. Now that I've drained the coolant, let's go talk about the procedure for the fill. Having said all that, let's remove the engine cover. So your bleeder is gonna be right here in this area. You're gonna need a spill-free funnel. This is a must for this one. I do have one recommended in my Amazon affiliate page. The link is in the description of this video. We must use this one and you'll see why. So, we're gonna loosen the bleeder, which is a 10 millimeter bolt. We're just gonna loosen it a little bit. And leave it right there. Then we're gonna take a hose now you notice this hose is uh, no longer clear, but you do need a clear hose, quarter inch inner diameter. Now you're gonna have to stretch it a little bit. So perhaps when the car is hot the day before you do this, try to fit it on there. The heat of the engine will stretch this vinyl hose and open it up a little bit so it sits snug on that bleeder. We're gonna install this hose on the bleeder and then run this hose back to our reservoir. I'm gonna use a clamp to hold it down. Now I will say one thing, all the bleeding success and failure will depend on how you watch the coolant running through this hose. This hose has to be clear. This hose doesn't look clear here, but it is, but this have seen hundreds if not thousands of bleeding procedures on these engines. You're gonna watch, you're gonna do this before you fill your coolant. Let's fill our coolant. You're gonna use Toyota Genuine Coolant, most of these two GRs, will take one and a half to two, sometimes just over a two. Depends if you're doing a water pump, if you're doing thermostat, if you're doing any kind of job where you're just replacing the coolant, that's how much, how you'll know how much it needs. So let's fill it up. However, before I, I fill it up, we're only gonna fill it up a little bit at a time. You'll notice with this bleeder open, it'll come down very quick. Do not overfill this because I'll tell you why later. Now here it is, now we're getting starting to fill up. I want you to notice the coolant coming out of the hose. You're gonna get to a point, here it is. 
the coolant will come up the hose. So you see that the coolant level in the hose is the same as the coolant level in the overflow funnel. You do not want to overfill the overflow funnel more than, not too much, because as we start bleeding, the level here in the funnel will go up, down, and you don't want it to overflow. That's a common mistake that I see. So once you got to this point, your coolant level is the same level as the funnel, and there's no longer bubbles or stuff coming out. We're going to go ahead and start the engine. As soon as you start it, you're going to need either a helper, or you can get a pedal depressor, or you can engineer something to push the pedal. You're going to want to have the heater off, completely off, front and rear, if your car is equipped with rear heater. And you're going to rev the engine over 2,000 RPM, so 2,000 or an up. If you start this engine cold, you're going to want to rev it up to 2500. After a little bit, it'll settle down to 2000. So let's go ahead and do that. While we do that, the noise will be a little bit loud. I'll try my best to explain, but we're going to be watching the hose, the coolant in the hose. You're going to see spits of coolant. This coolant, the standing right now, will go down immediately. And then you're going to see spits of coolant and all kinds of good stuff. But we're waiting for the very final complete flow of coolant where this hose has coolant coming out with complete pressure and draining back here. That's when you know this car is bled. But even then, there's a little bit of a, of a additional thing that you gotta do, which I will show you. But I just wanted you to watch this process from the beginning. It's gonna spit a little bit as the engine warms up. And then, actually, you're gonna get to a point where the coolant will just go down and you're gonna have very violent bubbling here that's when all the air out of the heater core is coming out and is coming back here once that happens you're going to start seeing coolant come up come up come up until it starts draining here with pressure not high pressure but enough pressure where you're going to, it's not going to be like the spinning that we get initially so let me go start the car rub it up to 2500 and we're going to watch what happens with the coolant. I'll try my best to talk, but the engine will be pretty loud, so my voice will not be very clear. Let's go ahead and do that. At this point, we're just going to wait for it to finish up. You see how the coolant is spitting right now? That is the spitting that I told you about. We're going to just continue to wait at this point. These are the spits of coolant. Some of it will come back in the reservoir, but they are not the final steady stream that we want. You gotta let this run until the coolant goes all the way back and then comes back with, with steady force. You'll see it. Let's just wait for it. This is what I was waiting for. When the coolant goes all the way back down and there's no longer coolant in the hose. Now this is bubbling hard. That's where all the air is coming out. This is the moment you want to wait for. You're getting very close to the end. At this point, your coolant here is going to drop rapidly. And you're going to see it. Just make sure it stays over the bottom of the overflow hose. Let's wait for it. Now you're going to start seeing that steady flow up the clear hose. We're waiting for it. It's going to take some time. We're going to wait for it to overflow all the way into the reservoir. There it goes. See that? It's coming up. That's steady flow. There's no air bubbles in it. See that? That is a steady coolant flow. No air. You're going to see like micro bubbles in there. Those are not a problem, but you notice it's a steady flow and you see the flow. Here is the flow. Now we're getting a steady flow out of this non-stop. At this point, you're going to reach in there and try to close the bleeder by hand. Okay. 
Now we're gonna let it settle down. Let the idle off. We're gonna let the car idle because now the coolant will drop some more at this point. Let's let it settle down until you see no more big bubbles coming out of here. Then top off your reservoir to full, clean up the coolant over there. The best way to clean the coolant over here is just to spill water over here and let it evaporate. Because as you do this procedure, you're gonna get some coolant spilled here and there's no way around it. Even when the hose is on, even if you're tightening the, the bleeder off, there's no way around that. So you're just gonna have to Tighten it, clean it up, tighten it up, and drive it. It'll smoke a little bit, but give it like a couple miles of driving. The smoke will clear and life is good. So there you have it, folks. This was very simple. It's not really very difficult. It is a little bit nerve-wracking the first time you do it because you see the coolant violently bubbling here and trying to come down and all that. But don't be, don't be intimidated by this. Right now, this car, the heater will be... Full blast warm at idle. If it has rear heat, the rear heat will work perfectly. Actually, the car we're working on today is a 2008 Highlander. They're, if they have rear heat, they're notorious to have air in the rear heat and then the rear heat doesn't work and all kinds of problems. Don't be afraid of this procedure. I've done this procedure on hundreds, if not thousands of 2GR engines and it works every single time, makes a little bit of mess with the coolant, but if you spill water on the coolant, it just breaks it down and you can really clean it. If you have some compressed air, you can dry all the air out, all the water out and uh, life is good. I never had a problem with this and I highly encourage you that you do this every time you open or drain any of the coolant in this car. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informative. I hope now all 2GR owners never had an issue with this. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other Toyota videos. Until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day. Try to close the bleeder by hand. Now this bleeder...